Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It's Wednesday, July 11th, 2018. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just, I just, I would love it. I just received some sad news. Uh, Gus D'Angelo, longtime owner of Mama Leone's, passed away. So I'd like to take a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Send out condolences to Linda and the family, who is a great uh, village district precinct business mm -hmm. landowner, and uh, you'll be missed. Okay, I'm gonna have a quick meeting. We got a nice crowd. Um, Deb, do you want to start? I'd like to. Thank you. Thank you for having myself and my neighbors and friends. And I'm going to just give an update. We started a year ago um, with you all, and I'd just like to provide an update on where we are at and what we have accomplished to date and where, where we hope to go from here. So, excuse me, you might want to walk this way. Pardon my back, everyone. So this is a presentation that I did um, back on June 20th for the Coastal Climate Summit. And I represented um, our neighborhoods um, representing over 50 Hampton Beach residents on the west side streets off of Ashworth Avenue, including Hobson Ave, Manchester Street, and then of course off of Island Path. What I provided was the perspective of a homeowner. And during flooding and when we wake up or during um, the actual floods, what it's like to have oceanfront property. So basically, a year in the making, the Memorial Day flood of 2017. After two nights of extremely high tides, the neighbors came together and we discussed things that we could do to protect our homes and property. We planned a neighborhood meeting, handed out flyers with meeting details, and asked people to bring photos if they had them from previous flooding events. At the meeting, we shared stories and discussed our concerns, and I contacted the Hampton Village Village District Commissioners and we requested to be on the June 2017 agenda. So meeting of June 14, 2017, we asked the village district to provide us with short-term parking. We also asked for um, receiving, if they could assist us with receiving alerts because most of us live off of the Hampton Harbor tide chart. We also asked for assistance from an engineer and then for um, assistance with planning for um, permitting. So at that meeting, I got educated, and I believe a lot of us um, also did, and as much as we appreciated everything you did, you then provided us with contacts at the town office. So our next meeting was in August of 2017, where we met with the town manager and the public works department. Um, we were able to, with the assistance of the town manager, he drafted a town ordinance for parking for us in any municipal lot for tides 10 feet and higher. And just so that everyone's aware, the tide for July will be starting probably this evening or tomorrow night. So what that ordinance provided us is parking. Um, you would work with Christina at the town manager's office to get a placard that you could leave in your car, in your vehicle during high tides and park in any municipal lot. And that's for anyone in any of the flood zones. Um, the placards expire on March 31st of each calendar year, so you need to renew that annually. We also, during that meeting, were able to receive the second of our requests, which was the alert system. So you can register on the Town of Hampton website to receive those alerts either via phone call or via email. And you no longer need to just rely on the um, Hampton Tide Chart. You'll now be able to get those alerts electronically. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to um, speak with you after the meeting. 
Then at the fall, 20, fall of 2017, the town manager presented a warrant article for the purpose of hiring a consultant engineering firm to study the impacts and solutions to flooding from the Hampton River along the west side streets <coughs> off of Ashworth and Brown Avenues. So one of the reasons that we really want to continue moving forward with our concerns of flooding is the safety and fire and medical and emergency. This is our one and only fire hydrant located on Hobson Ave. And you can see when the floods come in, it's pretty much underwater. We did see on WMUR during one of the storms this winter that the Hampton Fire Department did lose one of their engines um, trying to get through the salt water to help residents. Here is that hydrant again during one of our flood um, floods and storms this past winter. A little more underwater along with ice floating around it. And of course, along with the safety, we also have talked about trash, animals, animal waste, and um, sea life. So when we have floods, if we don't um, secure our trash cans or dumpsters, they float around. And that also um, includes hazards for um, health issues. Once again, trash in the water, same fire hydrant. And this is a home on Ash on um, Hobson Ave this winter. I believe that's a gas can in the driveway. So the impact also provides damage to our homes, our vehicle, and our personal property. Damage after time. This is a wall on the end. Bless you. On the end of Hobson, that is no longer there. It has been eaten away and deteriorated. We also have the same issue when it comes to foundations. Um, this past winter. Uh, half of one side of our home on Hobson, we um, had to replace 60 cinder blocks at the tune of around $4,600. This, this neighbor was lucky. Um, he was fortunate. The water is right up to the sill, but it did not enter his home. And this is a picture of my home on Hobson with our shed floating um, in the marsh it had broken away. Fortunately, it got caught on the corner of the house and we were able to um, re-secure it. Some of us do have some fun though. It isn't all just dreary stuff. We have neighbors and I believe she came in. Um, her and her husband and their daughter decided to try rafting down Hobson. So we had a good chuckle during that storm. Uh, another home on Hobson Ave that is um, pretty much flooded and once again during the winter storms. So that brings us to where are we today. So back to item number three, we requested an engineering study. We know that we need assistance and it's not going to be short term. Um, so the town of Hampton or the town manager and the selectmen um, provided a warrant article at the town meeting, at the March 2018 town meeting, and it was approved by 76% of the voters. And where are we with that? There is an RFQ, a request for qualifications, that was put out to bid by the Department of Public Works. There's eight respondents, and they are currently in the process of reviewing those. Once they choose a um, vendor or an engineer, then um, I believe we're going to be contacted to probably provide some information and some photos and they'll be meeting with us and helping to um, hopefully identify the problem and work through the solution. So what I'm going to, um, I just want to tell you one other thing that just happened, um, a grant by Diane Foster and Jay Diner um, was just submitted on July 6th to the Department of Environmental Services um, to review dynamic flooding in Hampton for Hobson Island Path and Manchester Streets. And if that grant is awarded, they're going to be looking for volunteers that will be putting gauges in your yard and they'll be able to capture the data during these high tides that will just provide them with additional information um, that they don't have right now. So I'm hoping that with that grant, um, the funding does get approved and that will be one more positive I believe in um, in our favor so I'm going to leave you with a time-lapse video some of you may have seen this I did email it out and I can email it again if you would like that
but this is on Hobson Ave. This is a GoPro that environmental services hooked up to the front of our home. And you can see how quickly the water comes in. It's a totally different perspective. So in 56 seconds, that's how long this video is, we all now have oceanfront property. 56 seconds, that's how much water. And notice the fire hydrant on the left. And that concludes my presentation. So thank you all. Thank you. Are you aware of the meeting at the Masonic Lodge? Yes, thank you. You that might want to mention yes, that. Yes, thank you. I, was, I had intended to do that. So, um, if you are not receiving my emails and you would like to, I'd be happy to add you to my email group list. Um, one of the emails that I recently just sent out is, there is building a flood smart seacoast courses that are, are classes that are happening this summer. The first one was on June 19th. And it was educational. We learned about the marsh and how the marsh is actually a sponge and absorbs the water. Of course, we have a lot more water than we've had in the past. The next class is July 17th, and there is still plenty of openings. And the other one is the next one is August 21st. So um, I'd be happy to um, email you this information if you would like Thank that. You. I just need your email addresses, and I can send you the registration information. I think that's an important meeting. Yes. Here's my email address. Could you put me on your email yes, address? Thank to. you. Thank you. So thank you again. Thank you. Oh, great. For the record, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Something that might be helpful for this group looking at this, I don't know if you're aware, but there was a commission appointed in the state a couple years ago. It, it went on for three years. Consisted of 35 members, every state agency, all the towns on the seacoast. And I was a member of that, and I've, I've gone to it. It's called the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission. We came up with a report that was about this thick that covered everything from, the, from tides to flooding to storm surge, uh, what to do about homes, how to plan, everything else. Every one of the towns got one, uh, got copies of this. They are available. It is a very, very helpful document, and it, it, it's a contingency planning deal. Mm -hmm. If this happens, this is the way to start the project. Um, my guess from what I've seen uh, thus far is that the town of Hampton hasn't done a damn thing. But you've gone to the Department of Public Works. They had nothing to do, nothing to do with this thing. <laughs> They're trying to do it a different way. They're trying to do it. The, the problem goes back, way back, on Hobson and streets like that. They never were built to a good standard for being where they are anyway. They should have been built higher with better standards on the, on the foundation. But if you go to this document, Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission Report, uh, the town planner should have that. And uh, I think you'll find it very interesting, it's very helpful as far as helping you to do your planning it lists resources. I mean, it's got indexes and references in there like you wouldn't believe. And I'm amazed that that, that isn't out there right up front for anybody that has a, a flooding problem anywhere on the seacoast right now. It obviously wasn't you were made made aware of it, but uh, it's a very useful document. Thank you. I'll look at that information. Um, so I'm going to as soon as I receive information, I did email um, DPW this week to ask them if they have a status update on the request for qualifications, and I know Jen was on vacation, so I'm hoping to hear back from her or Chris Jacobs in the next few days, and then I will share that with you as well. I'm willing to have a gauge on my property if you want. Great. Um, can you drop down your name and address for me? So this would all be pending the grant being yeah. um, awarded, and I'm hoping it does. Right. Wasn't there also an indication at the June meeting 
that this problem may be accelerating time-wise from early projections? Yes, so um, at the coastal conference that I presented at, what they're, pro what they're projecting is 26 storms a year by the year 2045. And by the year 2100, it could be a healthy copy of the day. And um, the article, I'm not sure where the newspaper article is that's going around, but it talks about how many homes are going to be I wouldn't, I wouldn't panic on that one. No, no, that I'm uses not. the upper edges of the yeah. estimates, right. and the likelihood of that is about 1%. But well, we do know that the flooding has definitely gotten worse over the past few years, um, and I'm very, very happy that the warrant article did pass at the town, and I'm looking forward to, hopefully, some information. I know it's not going to be the solving of the problem, but at least it will be, hopefully, the identification of the problem with some possible Thank you for all you're doing. Thank yeah. you all yes. very much. Thank you for your continued support. Um, your emails back to me are always welcoming and um, very, very supportive. So I thank you for all of that as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank Before you. everybody leaves on another dark note, there will be a special town meeting in August concerning the sewer pipe from the beach to the town and without that pipe being bonded the costs for the temporary solution are just not doable. So we encourage every one of you who is registered to vote, to vote, and those who are not, to speak to people who are residents able to vote. Uh, we just don't have any choice. Without that pipe being bonded and repaired, the, the whole beach is at risk. There's some empty seats if anybody wants to sit down. Okay, so that's, that's the end of that truck. Truck. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to go to old business. Uh, Bob? Do these yeah. people want to go because they're done, or do they wish to remain? They should have an option, I would think. Because I think was, I know. Well, I just wanted to tell them that. No, I think I just said it. Vote for the bond for the pipe. Yeah. Very important. For me? What? Old, any old business? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, so I'm sure everybody's seen the signs uh, for the parking app and the what to do app that's going on. So that that's a, 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 a thing that we did with the Chamber of Commerce. So the Village District and the Chamber of Commerce sponsored it. We're getting great, tremendous feedback. And so far we have 1,500? 1,500 people have already uh, downloaded the app and it's only been on since the second so it's it's really exciting I think once more and more people learn about it and we get a, we tweak it a little more it's definitely gonna um, make a huge difference the other item is for the area businesses um, I talked to um, Lieutenant Gidley I talked to the chief of police um, and we came up with an idea of maybe getting employees off the main part of the beach and put things, putting them a little further back at Island Path. Uh, by doing that, it's a nice safe route to go. It's well lit, uh, but it opens up better parking for everybody else. Um, and by doing that, they offered to give them parking for five dollars a day. So uh, that that lot is so underutilized; it's always empty. Uh, <coughs> A business wants to have their employees park there, they have to go down to the police station, fill out an application. as a $50 <coughs> fee, and that money goes to the administration and, and making tags and labels or whatever they're going to use for the people. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for the kids that are coming in or even anybody that's working that needs a place um, without having to pay $40 to park or $20 to park. And then I think it'll help the town as well because that lot the lot on Island Path. The, the lot on Island Path, yeah. They would charge thirty dollars there too. So. Right, but they wouldn't be for this, and, and and that lot, honestly, that lot, I think is full four days a year. So I think I don't think it's going to be a huge. Nobody knows where it is. No, exactly where they don't know where it is. And and when you look at the the lot on Ashworth, it's, it's only 
what is it, 200 feet away, or less than that. But that one fills, and they could, they could go just a little further, but they, they, they don't know what's there, so. Um, also, um, I guess this would be new business. I, I, we just received a check for $100 from um, Joyce Grand Mason um, because she's thrilled with Linda's group, the Beautification Committee, doing such a great job on the, yeah. uh, the gardens. Gardens in front of the Ashworth, so she did that in memory of Norman and Paul, who we all know uh, from the Ashworth. So we will accept any donations for anything, just so everybody knows. All right. New business. Maureen, any new business? Well, I country? noticed in the um, audience that uh, there are some country line dancers present. Oh, there we go. You're fabulous. You're fabulous. Uh, it's underway. I hope you enjoy it as much as I'm. Isn't it enjoyable? Wonderful teacher, that lady. Um, Michelle Jackson, I believe. Is her name? Michelle well, Jackson White. Oh, thank you. Um, and uh, the bands have been great, and the attendance has been terrific. And uh, I hope you'll come up tonight. Uh, Ayla Brown is on, and tomorrow night is the headliner, yeah. William Michael Morgan. Please come up and see him. I, I, Don't forget about Jillian Oh, excuse me. Jillian Calarelli is on. What time is she on? In the, just before him, seven o'clock. Then he comes on at eight fifteen. Eight fifteen. Okay. So Jillian is a Hampton Beach native family. Yeah, and, you, you know, should recognize uh, the name. Yeah, yeah. So you should know the name. So that's kind of exciting that she's playing on the stage. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. that's all I... And how has the day attendance been? Do we, do we think... Glenn, where are you? Where are you hiding? Behind Well... <laughs> The day attendance the is not what the evening attendance is, but it's it's anywhere from 50 to 125 people at any one time, which is stronger than I anticipated. Okay. Uh, the afternoon wasn't bad. Uh, Jilly Martin's on now. Great little performer, great voice. That little kid could go somewhere. You keep your eye on her. Um, she had a, her audience filled right up. So. Uh, Martin and Kelly, and they're coming back next Thursday night for our regular country music night. Okay. Bob, any new business? Yeah, two things. One, John, is it possible <laughs> under the parking app to create the ability? I noticed over the 4th of July, young children get separated from their parents, and you can imagine what a parent's feeling is at that point. There's an enormous crowd, some are separated in the dark. Could it be arranged that that app could notify people and have the police put a picture of the missing child on the app to help identify the child? Yeah. Mm. The, the app itself has a, um, <clears throat> a push capability. And, and for those that are much younger than I am, I guess a push means that you can send out a message to anybody who's on the app and all of a sudden your phone would get pinged that there was a message. Hmm. And you could open the message up and <coughs> yes, that type of message could be given up. Um, and the app also has a photo gallery. So you can reference the photo. Um, so yes, it does have that capability. So if that would ever happen, we could put it under, right now there is a, uh, a drop down section for public safety. And we can include another category within public safety. Right now, we have hospitals, uh, addresses, telephone numbers, the police department, the fire department. So we can actually add a, a another component, another category, in terms of um, you know this type of uh, need. And uh, very easily, we could put that on. That would be great. I saw the lifeguards do this on the beach, and it's very effective. Thank you. Amber, Amber Alert would be good. Yeah. And, and the other well, That's the a other whole thing. legal requirement for an Amber Alert. It's complex. Amber Alert where it goes to everybody whether they want it or not. It goes to everybody. Yeah, but you can't yeah. send out an Amber Alert without the state approval. And, that, and that's not, it's, that takes time, I think. This, this would, we could do instantly, so you know, hopefully that would be. Yeah. And if I may, just we just added one feature this week, and that is the uh, beach webcam. So people that are coming to Hampton Beach could download uh, the application 
and one of the uh, components of the app is you can actually see uh, the beach and all of the pictures that Mr. Kane and everybody else does such a good job with posting. Yeah. They might see too much traffic and turn around. I don't know if they want that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I have one other comment on the new business. Is that at our August meeting, the chairman of the table, uh, cable committee for Channel 22 will come and discuss the possibility of live broadcasting these meetings rather than streaming them. So anybody interested in that issue will either come or watch it later. I think that's it for new business. We have approval of minutes from April 10th, May 9th, and June 13th. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes as written? I'll so move. Second. second. All in favor? I have to abstain on the third one, though, because I wasn't here in June. Right. Abstain. Okay. Public comment. I'd like to say something. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. May I lead this up? I, I, bear with me. Um, I was not at the June meeting for various personal reasons, and I felt compelled after watching the the broadcast uh, to talk about um, the atmosphere of cooperation and respect that's generated by this particular board of commissioners for several years now. State Parks uh, Supervisor Meredith Collins was here, and she presented the, her presentation was a clear example of what can be accomplished when the state and commissioners work together for the betterment of the business community. Our relationship with the Chamber of Commerce is also a testament to the ongoing cooperation between both parties. The Hampton Beach Village District Commission is concerned does not have geographical boundaries as suggested at the last meeting. I recently had a conversation with one of the owners who was mentioned in that speech that occurred at the June meeting and uh, he said that he has no feeling of abandonment by the commissioners of the Hampton Beach Village District, and if he had, he would let us know. And any reference to the contrary is a personal affront to the three of us, as far as I'm concerned, because we, we work tirelessly to represent all of the businesses. Everyone is entitled to an opinion, and a disagreement on the changing of the roads certainly is called heated argument, caused heated argument. This argument belongs at the Hampton Beach Area Commission meeting. To bring it to this meeting and to apply a lack of concern for any business at Hampton Beach by these commissioners is blatantly wrong and frankly insulting. The commissioners do not always agree on every issue themselves, but we work together with an attitude of respect and cooperation within the board as well. I can assure you that the three of us will continue to engage in open dialogue and represent all of the businesses at the beach regardless of their location. Finally, I'd like to also state that the integrity of the two gentlemen commissioners on this board cannot be denied, and it is an honor to work with them on behalf of the residents and businesses of Hampton Beach. Thank you. <laughs> Proceed. Okay. <laughs> Linda. Should I go to the podium? Yeah. Uh, well. Put a rose on it. <laughs> okay, it's a tough act to follow. Um, <laughs> So I'm Linda Gephardt, everybody knows me as the flower lady, I work with beautification, the flowers are doing good, 90 degree weather is really tough on all the volunteers, working out in the hot sun, I've been putting in two to three hours watering, watering, weeding and deadheading. Um, so we're always looking for people, um, basically there's only three of us that work. Um, in front of the Ocean Walk, the mile long bridge garden that's called entrance to the state park. Um, the Hampton Beach Village District wel welcoming sign, Madeline Good does both signs. We have water now for her on 101. And I'm working on trying to get water in the playground, have called a plumber, so that's in the works. Um, so we need more people down by the bridge. And so if, if you can't get there by bike or walk, you can park in my yard. So if anybody feels like they want to help but they don't have a place to park, you can park in my yard. So we've desperately, there's three of us that are doing all of that. that. That's a lot of work. So have mercy on us. I'm only asking for like an hour a week. I'm not asking, you know, for many hours. Um, change, of, change of venue here. I'm also the president of the Hampton Arts Network. And once again, I want to give a shout out to Skip Windermiller, who has very generously given us his shop again for a gallery. So this summer we have 18 artists, and five of them are brand new. 
One woman sold her first painting in her whole life. She just sold Sunday, and I sold it, so I was very happy for her. Um, and one of the artists, Leah Reed, does um, gourd art. She grows gourds that are very hard. <clears throat> they last for many years. She makes birdhouses and all kinds of stuff out of them. And she's offering make and take every Tuesday from 2 to 5 at the gallery. And she's going to have small gourds, and you can do um, paint them and um, do different little projects for, like, for 3 or $5. So walk-ins, you don't have to register. If you, you know, looking for something to do, and you have a grandkid that's bored, um, every Tuesday, um, 2 to 5. And, and the gallery is in Skip's little... Um, Oceanside Mall. Thank you. I was trying to think of the address, but it's on the corner of um, Church Street. It's not hard to find. There's a big bark bike shop, and then there's us. So please come down and um, visit the gallery. Prices are very reasonable. We don't take a commission, so we pass on Skip's goodwill to the artist and um, don't take a commission of any sort. So please stop by and see what we have. We're only open till the Seafood Festival, so it's limited time, short season, like everyone else. Thank you. Charlie? Over there. I can't hear you on TV. <coughs> I, just, I just wanted to say, for most of the people in this room, I'm sure are probably in tune, but we'd be remiss to not report we have big tides coming this week, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I'm sure most of the people in here, but for those of us in low places, or have friends in low places, you know, we, uh, we need to get the word out. It looks to me like the first tide that, you know, that'll be substantial will be Thursday. I think you said tonight will be over 10, but it's a 10-1. But Thursday at 11.23, we have a 10.6 tide. Saturday, it's just after midnight, it's 12.18. We have a 10-7 tide. Sunday at 1.13 in the morning, it's another 10-7 tide. And then Monday at 2.09 a.m., we have a 10-5. And on top of this, most people here are well-tuned on it, but if you get an east wind on top of that, you know, you, I mean, these could be 11-foot tides. So let everybody know. You know, if there's a tenant down the street that hasn't been there before, you know, give them a heads up, and, you know. And say, you know, move your car to higher land. But, yeah, I'm just saying everybody should just let everybody know, you know, because, you, know, you know, repetitive losses, bottom line, they hurt us all in the long run. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any other public comment? Right. I just wanted to say I want to thank Greg Grady and Dave. We got through the sand sculptures, and nothing was wrecked this year. I know, yeah. Amen. So yeah. it went off without a hitch. One of the biggest complaints, though, that I had, there's no handicapped parking at the beach. Down at that end and that end. And, but there's nothing at this end. Am I middle. wrong, but can't you park anywhere if you have a handicap sticker? That's true, but you got to have a sticker. Well, yeah. yeah. But there's no handicap parking, per se, because those plots are already full. Those are done it. They would be, if, if there was a separate handicap spots, they would be anyways. They'd be that gone. could be, so but just, it's just a matter of, I'm just passing along with, the, one of the biggest complaints oh, was there was no handicap parking. parking. 900? Yeah. There's 2,000 metered okay. spots on the beach, and I get this daily. Yeah. And I have to point out that <coughs> I get up, my wife gets up at 5 o'clock, and there's one directly across the street from my house, and it's always filled. They're all filled. And if I walk from the playground to the chamber, there's probably about 18 spots, and probably half of them on a good well, day. That's a that's in the morning, right? No, that's that's all. They Most want. of them have handicap pockets on. Handicapped. So there is many, many, and I'm I'm one of those people that can't walk at some point. So okay. I fully understand it, but there there's a lot of spaces. Spaces, but they're not marked. 
you know, no, they, anyone that has one of those placards well, knows. Well, if I'm coming from Boston, Mass., yeah, how do I know back. that? Brian, they do it in all the states. It's federal law, sir. No, I understand that. I'm just passing along what was the big one of the biggest complaints that I had all week was there was no handicapped park. If we had 40 right there, they'd all be full. Probably would. Right. And I, I agree with you, but I'm just. I'd rather have 2,000. I'd rather just say something than yep. no. All right. Okay. Thank you. 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 He's great. Yes. Because they aren't marked, they're all taken. And if you don't get there real early, you can't find a place. And then you, the few that I marked are gone. So you're still sunk. Any other public comment? Seeing that, closing comments, Maureen? No, come up and see our wonderful entertainment, please. It's, it's, we're having such a good time up there, aren't we? Please come. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming. Because you are doing what you're doing, the town is responding. Most of these things are bottom up in terms of getting things done. That's just life's normal way. <laughs> Continue doing what you're doing. Stay the course. Your problems are real. They're not going to get simpler, but they can be moderated by everyone kind of attempting to work together toward reasonable solutions. Everybody's in the same boat. The beach is the town, and the town is the beach. And you can't have one without the other. <coughs> Hi, again, thank everyone for coming. I want to <coughs> thank the cooperation that the village district and the chamber and the state, things are really smooth as with the town. Everybody seems to be <coughs> moving in the right direction. And I want to thank Glenn for doing a great job on this uh, country week. Yes. I know it's a lot of work. <laughs> well, he put in a voucher for a whole Stay horse. healthy. We got a long <laughs> summer. <laughs> All right, so thanks. Thank you again, and the meeting will be adjourned at 6.05. Have a great night. Enjoy the fireworks tonight.